So what I have here is uh, just an audio configuration with a four-channel input block, a whole bunch of processing blocks, and an eight-channel output block. And so what someone might want to do is take all of these processing blocks and put them in a custom block so that they're uh, encapsulated and hidden away and maybe even password protected. And so this is all stuff that we could do in Audia and Nexia, but in Tessera it works a little differently. And so what I'm going to do is just grab a custom block here and insert it in my file. And as you'd expect, it asks you how many inputs and outputs you want in the custom block. We want to have four inputs and eight outputs. And when I hit OK, instead of creating a new file, as you'd expect to happen in Audia and Nexia, uh, we actually get a sub-window within the main file, and this is where we create our custom block. You'll see this sub-window has uh, four input terminals and eight output terminals. Uh, which we can use to connect to uh, the other blocks in our file. And it has these audio pass-through blocks, which allow us to wire up all the blocks inside. It also has a collapse button, which allows me to collapse the whole thing down into a normal block and also expand it back out in to see what's inside of it. And so now what I need to do is get some blocks inside of my custom block. And there's a couple ways we can do that. One way is to just insert new blocks directly into the custom block like so, and when they're inserted inside of the custom block, they're now part of the custom block. They move around with it. Uh, or I can also drag blocks in from the main file into the custom block. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to need to make this a little bigger. And I'll go ahead and disconnect these from the input and output blocks, and I'll select them all. And if I hold down the Shift key, I can just drag them all into the custom block. Now they're part of the custom block. When I move it around, they move around. And so if I wire them up now to the audio pass-through blocks, they're now wired into the inputs and outputs of the block. And now I can collapse this all down now all encapsulated into one block, which has cleaned up my file a lot. And I can connect them back in to the input and output blocks. Um, now I can expand this out if I need to to see what's inside of that. And any blocks that end up behind the custom block but are not part of it will show up as transparent. We can also password protect custom blocks just like we can in Audi and Nexia. To do that, we would just right-click on the block to get its properties window. And in the Properties window, under DSP Properties, we can set a password. Then the next time we want to expand the custom block, it's going to ask us to enter the password first. As long as we enter the correct password, it allows us in.